Today we're driving the all-new Land Rover Range Rover. This is the long wheelbase. It's seat seven, rides on electronically controlled air suspension, has a ton of off-road capability, though this one has 23-inch wheels fitted to it. It has a three liter turbocharged and supercharged inline six, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. It's four wheel drive, makes about 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. There are some hybrid and plug in hybrid models coming in here in the future, but for now, this gasoline variant is what we have as the base model. Starts around $111,000, including destination. This one is specced up to about 130 grand with a few options. I'll include those in the description. Gorgeous inside and out, a really sleek and smooth design to this new Range Rover. Let's start it up, we'll show you around it, and we'll take it for a drive. Lots of digital displays. You can see some familiar switch gear from Jag and Land Rovers in previous model years. But overall, they've gone through this interior and kind of eliminated some buttons, put a few settings in the main infotainment display. We have push-pull knobs here for our climate control or heated seat controls. A little bit more of a smaller shifter. Nice looking reverse camera. Here's our drive mode selector. It's all very sleek and very cleanly designed in this Range Rover. I love this interior color, massive panoramic sunroof. We even get a digital rear view mirror so you can see around those third row passengers if you've got kids sitting back there. Overall, a really nice design. Functionally in here, it's a bit tedious to set things up on initial drives. If, you're just, if you've just bought this, it may take some time to kind of get used to all the controls and get used to all the settings. But I think once you've lived with this Range Rover, everything will kind of be set to your preferences and you won't have to fiddle in with the deep menus for too many things. Climate control is pretty set it and forget it. Auto uh, controls, you can change your seat settings with these, this button here. Many more adjustments than what's just here on the door. Three memory settings. You can adjust your lumbar, your side bolsters, your shoulder rest, your headrest, and this little cushion down here. There's also a massage function, that's very nice. No heated steering wheel that I can find in this Range Rover for $111,000. Starting price, that's a bit of an oversight, kind of a bummer right now in the cold temperatures that we're seeing in Michigan. Down here, we've got a place to wirelessly charge our phone. We've got a USB-C port. This is probably the best place to put your mobile device down here. The second compartment is super deep and low and probably best suited to, I don't know, more cables or something like that. Lots of storage in this Range Rover. We get some armrests that are adjustable with these knobs. Two glove boxes, which is kind of cool. One up top and one down below. And look at this wood trim, just gorgeous. Beautifully appointed, open pour wood, really nice straight grain. Love the leather on the dashboard. These <laughs> pole bars. Yeah, pretty nice looking interior. Let's walk around the outside and show you guys what that looks like too. You'll notice these door handles, they're flush mounted when the vehicle is locked and they'll open up to you when you approach your Range Rover. We're sitting on Pirelli Scorpion Zero all season tires. 23 inches in diameter. Look at this new rear end. Really sharp, really pretty kind of wild looking. Almost looks like a concept car. I'll turn the lights on and show you what that looks like too. The taillights are pretty much hidden until you turn them on. Makes for a really clean design in my opinion. Look at that, that's wild. Pop the tailgate, take a look in the back. A familiar split tailgate design. Just press this button to lower that. It all lowers electronically, that's beautiful. A little bit of a cargo cover here. You take this out and you've got a pretty good amount of storage space behind the second row. And if you wanna fold the third row up, you just hold these buttons and they will rise up and you get two more seats in the back. hop in the second row and we'll show you what all that looks like. One button press to close both tailgates. 
91 octane recommended really nice back seat space we have window shades seat controls a little bit of storage under there rear climate control and then to access the third row all you do is just press this button it'll all fold forward I'll even move the front seat forward a little bit to make room for everything. And getting back here isn't terrible. You can put that headrest up. I'm 5'10", my head is touching the roof, but kids should be just fine. And you can adjust the second row forward and backward for a little bit more or less room for the passengers. All you have to do is to return this seat is just press this button. You have to hold it so that you don't squish any legs in that third row. And it does take its sweet time. You can even adjust this even more with these buttons here. You can see how far everything goes back. Second row has plenty of room, lots of space underneath that front passenger seat to put my legs. I've got rear climate control, a little bit of ambient lighting back here too, and a really nice view forward. Love the feel of the inside of this Range Rover. For a hundred grand, a little bit over, this is a very, very nice place to be. You get into some of the higher models with the V8 and prices really start to creep up into the 150s, 160s. Let's pop the hood, take a look at this supercharged and turbocharged inline six. Not much to see here except for a little bit of plastic. Pretty smooth shifting eight speed automatic transmission. Pretty good fuel economy from this Range Rover too. 18 miles to the gallon in the city, 26 on the highway. And a lot of that is thanks to this aerodynamic new design. This only has a drag coefficient of 0.30. There are sedans that have drag coefficients of 0.30 out there. That's pretty impressive. Granted, this is a larger SUV, a larger vehicle. It's inherently gonna be less efficient cutting through the air than a sedan, but that's pretty impressive for an SUV. The suspension can also lower to access height mode and off-road height. Let's show you what access height looks like here really quickly. All you have to do to put it into access mode is press this little car button, tap the access, and everything will lower. And here's what the new Range Rover looks like slammed to the ground. Cool. Makes it a little bit easier to load stuff in the back for passengers to get in and out. Let's say you want to go into off-road mode all the way up. Air suspension rises up pretty quickly. And you can see you get a ton of ground clearance. Really nice approach angles in this mode. Breakover looks pretty good. Fantastic. Look at that ground clearance. We also get a new multi-link rear suspension in this Range Rover. Gives us a little bit more interior room and also makes space for hybrid batteries in the future with other models. This long wheelbase will probably turn into some type of a plug-in hybrid, or maybe even a fully electric version at some point. I don't really know a whole lot about the future models and the future plans for the Range Rover, but today, let's review this three liter supercharged and turbocharged powertrain. We'll mention a couple more points in this interior and then we'll take this for a drive. We've got a drive mode selector here that rises up out of the center area. We have options between grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, and your custom configuration. And for on-road driving, we have the options for eco and a dynamic mode, which we'll test later in this video today. You can see we have some quick access controls to the left of our screen. Those are constant, those always stay up. I like how we get a home button in this Range Rover, and you can hear there's a bit of haptic feedback too. So we have quick access controls for CarPlay, wireless of course, some different engine and uh, stop start settings, stability control, and you can also control your ride height here too. The haptic feedback does feel nice. You've got 
access for your navigation, your phone, and then a home button that sits down there as well. Lots of different menus here on this main screen that you can swipe through. For the most part though, you're probably just gonna be living in CarPlay or Android Auto. The user interface in this Range Rover is just okay. Everything has a pretty long delay to it from just making adjustments to your climate control to heated seat functions. Uh, the buttons on the steering wheel tend to just kind of take their sweet time changing uh, between menus and everything. There's just a little bit more involvement in the process of changing things and selecting things in this Range Rover than I would like, and it takes a bit longer to do it than I think is necessary. That said though, it all works, and uh, once you get the hang of it, once you kind of get used to the way everything is set up and how it's done, it's pretty easy to make changes and, and use this vehicle. All right, I think that's a pretty good walk around. Let's go out and take this for a drive and see how it does on the road. We also get a quick access control here for our forward-facing parking cameras. That's really nice. This Range Rover also features rear wheel steer. You barely notice it until you go for a U-turn. You can look back and see those rear wheels angled out just a bit. Part of the extra space from that multi-link rear suspension comes in handy in daily driving situations and off-road. This is a super smooth SUV to drive, a little bit floaty on the air suspension in normal mode. Things definitely stiffen up quite a bit in dynamic mode. A nice softness to all the controls. Steering is super light. Check out this turning radius here. <laughs> Wild. When you look down, you can kind of see the rear wheels tilting in. Good amount of torque too from this three liter turbocharged, supercharged inline six. There is a bit more road noise and NVH over potholes, expansion joints from these 23 inch wheels, but they do look good. Savage Geese making another appearance before they fly south. This Range Rover has a very commanding presence driving down the road. It feels luxurious and special. The high driving position gives you a lot of visibility all the way around. This engine's pretty quiet. Sometimes there are some lurchier starts off the line, but for the most part, the transmission does a nice job shifting smoothly. Right, Shall we switch into dynamic mode here? Take some corners. You can immediately feel the suspension stiffen up. A bit of body roll. metal paddle shifters behind the wheel. Pretty responsive, eight speed automatic. Not bad. Let's go into, we'll go back into comfort mode. Cruise control is easy enough to enable. All you have to do is just hit the set button. We have lane keep assist, as well as adjustments for our following distance, and all of that is shown to you in the head-up display. You can skip five mile an hour increments very easily with the up-down switch. Overall, I found these cruise control controls to work pretty well this week. No major complaints there. And all you have to do is press cancel on the bottom that switch and everything turns off. A little bit of wind noise coming through the door seals on the highway, but for the most part, 
pretty quiet at speed. There's a real consistency to all of your inputs and controls in this Range Rover. From even the haptic feedback on the touchscreen to turning the climate control knobs, everything has a softness and a lightness to it. Stop start is pretty seamless as well. Very curious to see what a plug-in hybrid variant of this would look like or feel like. A little bit of intervention from stability control at the limit of cornering, but it lets you know that you're getting close to that limit in your heavy three-row SUV. Steering weight's up nicely around corners. Overall, this handles pretty well for what it is. Excellent road manners also considering that it has an insane amount of off-road capability. Good power too. Police reported ahead. We do get a steering assist system that keeps us centered between the lines. We'll prompt you to keep your hands on the steering wheel. I like how you can quickly enable and disable the lane keep and steering assist system right here on the steering wheel. It's an easy button. You don't have to go or search for anything else in the screen or elsewhere. Take your hands off the wheel. Let's go back into dynamic mode. While we have some corners, why not? We'll put our transmission into sport mode. Wake things up even more. Above 80 miles an hour, a little bit more wind noise. Handling is impressively good for what this thing is. Wow. Probably in part thanks to the rear wheel steer. Brake pedal's a bit mushy, but again, tuned for comfort and for a more smooth and luxurious feel. You don't want grabby brakes in your seven passenger luxury SUV. Eco mode dulls the throttle, smooths out shifts, puts you in the highest gear possible. Fan speed's a little bit loud for the lowest setting. There's a setting to quickly enable and disable stop start. Just do that right there. Ride quality is excellent over bumpy roads. No complaints there. A little bit floaty, like I said earlier, but it does a nice job of just smoothing everything out. Not a lot of body motion, and the longer wheelbase in this Range Rover helps with that too, keeping everything stable. Electronically controlled air suspension does a nice job adjusting over different surfaces, and even with these 23-inch wheels, ride is pretty good. I'd probably want to spec the smaller 21s for a bit more sidewall here in Michigan, but that's okay.
I'm gonna say Land Rover does make some of the best luxury SUVs. They just waft along and are so relaxing to drive. So, some final thoughts on the new Land Rover Range Rover. I'm very excited to see what they do with electrification with this platform. I think there's a lot of potential here. A plug-in hybrid variant of this would be fantastic and I think very desirable. And also, in this standard base model form, this is a pretty good vehicle too. For the price, it's definitely the cheapest option by quite a lot. Uh, pretty big margin. Some of the higher trims, the V8s, the uh, Autobiography editions get into really astronomical prices into the mid 100s. But as far as value goes, this is a pretty nice place to be. This is $130,000. It has some options that maybe you could do without. We're going to test out the Meridian sound system in this in a few minutes once we wrap up this review. Uh, so if you want to hear that, stay tuned for the end. But overall, I think a pretty nice package. Looks amazing, super sleek, super gorgeous inside and out. A very nice looking SUV. I could do with a few more physical controls, but I think Land Rover's done a nice enough job automating a lot of stuff like climate control, gauge dimming, um, and once you get your seat memory settings set up and figured out, going into the menus for minor adjustments isn't a big deal after you've lived with this car for some time. I do like the overall placement of everything. I think they've done a nice job with uh, some of the ergonomics and physical controls that we do have in this Range Rover. I would like to see a bit more speed and response from everything. There's just a little bit of a lag and a delay here. It's kind of a lazy interface to, to work with, but it gets the job done and it hasn't been buggy or anything this week. I have had some issues with the drive mode selector, but I think it's taking its time. If I switched an off-road mode and then want to switch back to an on-road mode, it takes a minute for all the settings to kind of uh, go back to stock ride height, stock differential settings, everything like that. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be switching back and forth between drive modes regularly anyway. So it is nice that they have all these drive modes pre-selected. It pretty much figures everything out that you need to for the given conditions, whether you're driving in mud, in rocks, on road, in a more dynamic, twisty road situation. You just put it in that drive mode and you're good to go. And it also has an automatic setting here too. All right, I think that's going to wrap up my initial thoughts on this new Land Rover Range Rover. Stay tuned for the Meridian sound system test. We'll walk you around this one more time, and that'll be a wrap on this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys later. At idle, this almost sounds like a diesel. Alright, so the Meridian sound system is a pretty cool option. I'll be honest, I haven't really listened to this that much this week. It also does some active noise cancellation, which is pretty cool. Let's go into our sound system test playlist. We've got our volume knob. And we'll press play. volume controls a physical dial here on the steering wheel. There's a 3D sound mode, which definitely helps things a little bit. A 
overall, I think this Meridian is pretty nice. It's very clear. Base is a bit weak. You can turn that subwoofer up a tad, but for the most part, I'm not as impressed with the depth of the sound here. Yeah, not a lot of strength to those lower tones, unfortunately. So, for 100 grand, I would like a little bit better sound system in this Range Rover. Pretty typical and average for some of the Meridian sound systems that we've seen in uh, Land Rovers and Jaguars in the past. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.